You know, I was wondering what happened to Bayonetta 3 after the initial reveal. It's kind of weird that it went dark, especially when you consider that E3 passed and Bayonetta 3 wasn't there. If this Nintendo leaker is telling the truth, Bayonetta 3 may be a bigger game than we thought. Hey guys, it's Rob here and welcome back to the RoboChan Show where we cover the latest gaming news, leaks, and rumors from Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo in 2020 and beyond. If you want to be kept up on the latest gaming news, make sure you click that red subscribe button below this video and that notification bell so you know when I upload. And if you're interested, I have a Patreon, which link to that will be in the pinned comment along with my Twitter account. In this video, we are going to talk about Bayonetta 3 and the huge potential information dump on what exactly is going on with Bayonetta 3, some information on its development, and overall why Bayonetta 3 was just not at E3 and why it's been so silent. If you guys enjoy this video, leave a like and a comment on today's topic. It helps the video get pushed to more viewers. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and help me reach my new goal of 700 followers, you can follow me at RoboRob93. Without further delay, let's get to the video. So Bayonetta 3 is one of those Nintendo Switch games that a lot of us were expecting to be at E3 2021. In fact, I'd say it was pretty crazy that the game wasn't at E3 at all. Even when you hear this information from the Nintendo leaker, it's still insane that we haven't seen a glimpse of gameplay from Platinum Games' new game. Especially when you consider the first trailer from Bayonetta 3 was three years ago, which is a long time. But now that E3 2021 is done and it's been a good time after E3, I think we can all ask the question, where is Bayonetta 3 and what the heck is going on with the development? Development of the game. Well, the ever-growing Samus Hunter, who has a good track record so far, has some insight into development of Bayonetta 3 with a string of tweets outlining what exactly is going on with this game. Now before we continue, for those who want to see the tweets, there's going to be a link in the pinned comment, and also, seeing as this is not information coming from Nintendo, take it with a grain of salt. So the first tweet says this, I've had some requests to publish some background on the development of Bayonetta 3. Don't worry, the project is still continuing and it's not cancelled. Development began a few months before its reveal, the deal's came after Scalebound's cancellation. If this is true, then anyone who was worried about Bayonetta 3's development and whether or not it's going to be cancelled or not should sleep easy now. According to Samus Hunter, the development began a few months before the reveal three years ago and the deal came together with Nintendo after Scalebound's cancellation. So this gives us a really good time frame on when the development of this game started. Moving on to the next tweet, she says this, Kamiya and Platinum Games were looking for the next flagship project, presenting several projects to partners they've worked with, including Nintendo proposed the development of Bayonetta 3, which accepted the request and funded the sequel. So this is something that has happened with Bayonetta 2. In fact, I'd say Bayonetta 2 and 3 wouldn't exist without Nintendo taking the risk on Platinum and Bayonetta 3 and 2. But this also means that Platinum Games has had several projects going on in the past three years, which could end up affecting them long term when they have so many games being in development. Which was mentioned in the following tweet, and this is what it said. Obviously, it wasn't the only project they were working on. Asshole Chain had started to be at a good point. It was expected from the start of Bayonetta 3 would not receive too much visibility until Astral Chain would not come out in its marketing year. So this is something that what I think is happening to the Metroid Prime Trilogy, the Zelda 35th games, and other things like that. I always like to use the words Nintendo's momentum. Nintendo will release one game and bring forth a momentum of excitement among fans, the money for Nintendo, and the marketing that comes with it. It's almost like a wave. Once that dies down a bit, Nintendo releases another one to keep that wave going and not flattening out. The teaser was decided more at the behest of Platinum Games to assure the fanbase that after the porting of the first two titles, the series would continue. Unfortunately, development is taking longer than necessary, so here are the main reasons. And here is the meat of the post, and where we really start to see why they weren't at E3 and what the heck is going on. The first one is titled An Ambitious Project. Unlike Astral Chain, where the team from the beginning had designed the game at 30 FPS, for Bayonetta 3, the team wants to aim for 60 FPS without sacrificing graphics. This has brought complications in development, even to optimize the engine as much as possible. So this is something that we have seen a lot lately with a lot of devs. The Nintendo Switch, for all the great games it's had with Breath of the Wild 1, Monster Hunter Rise, and other big games that are big open world games on the Nintendo Switch, the development of these games are challenging for these devs and they've come out and said that. I mean, I can't even imagine what kind of magic went into getting The Witcher 3 and Doom games to run on the Nintendo Switch. And the next tweet is titled, Incorrect Development, Time Forecast. The team had assumed a cycle of three years of development, a few months more than the second 
title, but Bayonetta 2 was born recycling the base of the first, even at the level design, and some ideas were already ready slash finalized even before the Nintendo funds. With Bayonetta 3, most things were recreated from scratch, leading to longer development timelines. Now, the next one speaks about the bug and how it affected the development of the game. Platinum Games are an independent studio. This means they had to manage all the internal organization issues by themselves, purchasing the infrastructure for smart working. The studio was even shut down for a month with very little organization progress. Basically, several months of development were skipped and all the projects suffered major delays. Nintendo doesn't want to rush this project and will only release it when it meets a certain level of quality. So I think this is part of the obvious thing that we all expected for any game during this time. The bug has been a huge problem for the gaming industry overall and it really has hurt a lot of games, not just Bayonetta 3, but more games like Breath of the Wild 2, Splatoon 3, Pokemon Legends, and even games that are already released like Pokemon Snap. So to me personally, this really isn't a surprise. Now the next tweet is something I really didn't expect and it talks about how big this game is and how ambitious the game is. It even talks about game modes and other things as well. The project is ambitious and there are also plans to expand the online mode so the wait will be worth it. In the end, the huge wait was due to a mishandling of the announcement made too early combined with some management issues related to COVID and too much projects being developed. This is something that we have seen from a lot of games in development. I mean, think back to these two games right here, Cyberpunk 2077 and Anthem, two huge games that were supposed to be really, really good and they were really ambitious, but because of management and among other reasons, of course, they were pretty much a dud. Of course, these are extreme examples, but it's a good example of how important management is in any business, really. I mean, I think back to when I worked at Target and the management was horrible and it showed throughout the whole store. The store was messy, people were getting sent to different spots that didn't even need help, and it really slowed down business and it really affected the store. And a lot of the problems were because of the dumb decisions from the managers. But anyways, according to this Nintendo leaker, this is why we haven't seen anything from Ben 3, the lack of gameplay or any really significant news, and it's because the virus, the management, and how they're going forward during the pandemic, as well as the game being made too early and having multiple projects at the same time. When you add in the fact that it's more ambitious as well, you can start to see why we haven't seen any gameplay or really any news. And that's it for this episode of the Robotron Show. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching guys and remember, stay safe, stay charged, and have a good one.